Good evening, good evening, good evening. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our midweek gospel explosion, pastoral teachings. Certainly, we thank God for each of you on today. We do honor God, who is sovereign and supreme, to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide. He who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. And to each of you in your respective places, we greet you with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. Again, I said welcome to our midweek gospel explosion. Well, tonight we'd like to call your attention to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. That's Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter 17, we'll begin reading at verse 48. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 48. You will find these words recorded. And it came to pass... When the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this your vessel, that I may preach and teach with power and with clarity. Anoint each of us the more. Anoint our hearts, minds, our spirits, uh, that we might hear this word on tonight. In advance, we give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise for it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Every heart said, Amen. Well, tonight, we're going to speak from this subject. Overcoming limitations. Overcoming limitations. For the, fa for the past several weeks, we've been talking about overcoming limitations. Uh, this overcoming that or conquering this conquering our fears and overcoming disappointments and all of that and I believe that the spirit is leading me to talk uh, a lot about conquering overcoming and defeating things that has the tendency to keep us stale and stagnant simply because of the times in which we are living so I think it's important as well as conquering our fears and overcoming our disappointments. And and uh, so tonight we're going to talk about overcoming limitations. Now, according to Webster, limitation simply means a limiting rule or circumstances, a restriction, a shortcoming, or a defeat. So we can tag this overcoming limitations, overcoming uh, restrictions or restraint. So as we look at this particular text, the story uh, of uh, David, and when we think of David, many times and oftentimes we don't think of limitations immediately. Here is a man who achieved great success and made it to the top of his world. He was a great warrior 
and the greatest of all of Israel's kings. Yet there were many who never saw David's potentials. As a young man, he didn't look like a warrior or a king. He was the youngest of his father's sons, the youngest son in his family. And as a boy, he did not receive affirmation or approval from those that were around him. David's greatest battles in his early years of life were not against the lion or bear that he slew while protecting his father's sheep. His greatest obstacles were created by people who tried to put limitations on him. Think for a moment of how many people have tried to limit you or put limitations on you or said that you couldn't do this or you couldn't do that or even we can't do this or we can't do that. So my brothers and sisters, let's look at how others saw and treated David and tried and tried to limit him from doing certain things in his life. So the first thing I want us to notice is that David's father did not think David had wisdom potential. No, he didn't. And I'm going to show you the reason why. His own father didn't think that he had wisdom potentials. In other words, he didn't think that David could be king. Are you someone who feels the pain of having a parent not believe in you? Think with me. David knew that particular pain. When Samuel arrived at David's father's house, Jesse's house, to anoint one of Jesse's sons, Jesse lined up the ones he thought had king or wisdom potential. That was every son except David. Jesse didn't even bother to call David, his youngest son, from the fields. He judged the sons based on who looked like a king, who or who looked like someone with wisdom or had wisdom potential. But God had something else in mind. So let's look at uh, chapter 16. Let's go back one chapter and look at chapter 16, verse 6 and 7. Listen what it says. And it came to pass when they were come, and he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You see, what happened there is that Jesse literally paraded seven sons before Samuel. Yet God didn't choose any of them. God wanted David. And my brothers and my sisters, sometimes when we feel like the least of these, or we feel limited, God has already chosen us. God wants you. Are you hearing me? Yes, he chose David. God wanted David, the one with heart. 
Isn't it reassuring to know that God values us for who we truly are, even if our family doesn't? So, my brothers and my sisters, as we see here, as we look at how David's friends and family saw him, his father did not think that he had wisdom potential and think that he could be king of Israel. Secondly, David's brothers did not think he had warrior potential. No, more rejections. You see, if you read the story of David uh, and read the story of David and, and, and his, uh, his, his encounter with Goliath, we see that, 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 that David was rejected. He was rejected by his father. Now he's rejected by his brothers. You see, when Israel was at war with the Philistines, three of David's brothers became soldiers in the Israelites' army. David was left home to take care for his father's flock. So what happened was Jesse sent David down to the battlefield to take his brother's food and bring back news. And when David did that, when he went down to the battlefield to carry his brother's uh, food, David saw his brothers in war. And when he got there to bring them food, his brothers abused him. Especially when David expressed interest in doing battle with the giant Goliath. When all the soldiers that were there on the battlefield were running scared, they were fearful of the giant Goliath. So let's go back to chapter 17. And look at verse uh, number 28, chapter 17, verse 28. And listen, listen, listen what happens here. And Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab, anger was kindled against David. David was his brother. And he said, why cometh down, thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Wow. You see, David brothers saw him as nothing more than an errand boy, someone to bring them food because they were hungry. But he was really, even at this point in his life, David was really a man with a mission. So we noticed so far that his father, those who put limitations on David, his father didn't think that he had a wisdom potential. His brothers did not think he had warrior potentials. Now, thirdly, King Saul, who was the king at this time, did not think David had winner's potentials. What happened? Well, hear me well. When King Saul heard that there was someone in the camp who was willing to fight the giant Goliath, he sent for him and who walked in to the king palace but a shepherd boy named David, saying to the king, let no man's heart fail because of him, him who the giant Goliath, your servant, David is saying, I will go and fight with this Philistine. Guess what Saul said? Let's look at verse 33 of 
uh, chapter, chapter 17. Listen to what Saul said. Saul said to David, verse 33, Thou art not able. You can't do this. Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a, but a youth. And he, a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lion, a, a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Wow. You see, Saul said in verse 33, you're, you're not able to go against this Philistine. You're just a youth. And he'd been a warrior since he'd been a youth. You see, Saul literally thought David wasn't winners or champion material. That he wasn't up for the task. So Saul, King Saul, tried to get David to wear his royal armor. But guess what? It couldn't fit. It couldn't fit David. So David took it off. David didn't allow, hear me well, David didn't allow Saul to hinder him with his low expectation or his bulky armor. My brothers and my sisters, you can't allow, allow people, even if they're close related to you, you can't allow them to hinder you with their low expectation. If God has called, commissioned, and chosen you to do it, guess what? You can do it. Mm -hmm. You see, David went face to face with, with Saul by disarming Saul, so to speak, by taking off the garment that Saul warned him to put on. And, but David decided that he was going out to face Goliath just as he was. Many times, my brothers and sisters, to get past those things that people has limited us not to do is to use what we have and allow God to do the rest. If we are going to overcome limitations, overcome limited rule or circumstances, overcome restrictions or restraint, then we must not allow people like Saul people with the Saul attitude to hinder us with their low expectations of us. So we see here that David's father didn't think that he had wisdom potential. His brother or his brothers didn't think that he had warrior potentials. And King Saul didn't think David had winner's potential. Goliath the giant didn't think David had willpower potential. Why do I say that? Well, hear me well. You see, a lot of people judge your willpower or what you're willing to do by what they see from the outside. They don't know what's in the inside. But remember, the text I just read a few minutes ago is that God don't look at the out appearance. He looks at the heart. So, so this huge Philistine, Goliath, this, he took one look at the shepherd boy and reacted negatively. Let's go back to the text. And let's look at verse 43 and verse 44, chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. Listen to what it says. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog 
that thou comest to meet, coming to me with staves. And the Philistine cursed David by his God. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Well, when Goliath looked at David, he reacted negatively. You see, Goliath despised David and Goliath believed that the boy wasn't even worthy of a proper burial. And with those words, he attacked David. He didn't think that David was skillful enough. My brothers and sisters, hear me well. You can easily determine the caliber of a person by the amount of opposition it takes to discourage him or her. What happened was when Goliath said what he said, David got ready to attack the giant Goliath. You see, David faced a great opposition. And my brothers and sisters, sometimes on this journey, we have to face great oppositions. It could be someone we know. It could be someone we love. It could be someone that that, that uh, we really have helped along the way in our lives. But sometimes we have to face great opposition. In this particular case, everyone told David he had no potential. His father said he didn't have potential uh, to be a king or to have wisdom. His brother said he had no potential to be a warrior. And then the king said he didn't have potentials to be a winner. Goliath said he didn't have potential to fight against him. He didn't have enough willpower. He wasn't, he wasn't willing enough, wasn't skillful enough. But guess what? Hmm. David was able, hear this right here. David was able to go beyond his family relational limitations. He was able to go beyond the King Saul's leadership limitations and go beyond the Goliath skill or skillful limitations. Are you hearing me? He threw off all the limitations that others placed on him and David actually killed Goliath. And when he did that, guess what? He removed the limitations not only from his family and friends, but he removed the, the, the limitations from the army of the Israelites and they defeated the Philistine army. Wow, what is that saying? That is saying that David's person of victory turned into a victory for an entire nation. That says to us that... A victory from us can change a whole entire family. It can change a whole entire community, a whole entire city. So the question may be asked, what can encourage us from David, David's experience with the giant Goliath? Well, the first thing that can encourage us is that limitations 
don't limit us unless we let them. Are you hearing me? Limitations don't limit us unless we let them. You see, my brothers and my sisters, David's father, his brothers, and his leader all thought he had no potential. But in reality, he had the greatest potential of all. Why do I say that? Because he had God potential. And that's what we need. You see, when David was young, he was able to keep growing in spite of the negative reactions of others because of God's assistance. Because God was with him. And so when David went to war, against the giant Goliath, he came against Goliath in the name of God, in the name of the Lord. And he, he wanted to face and fight and finish Goliath simply because Goliath was blaspheming against God. Goliath was, was, was talking smack about David's God. Uh-huh. So, so David realized, even from a young man, that God could strengthen him to rise above limitations that life and others would try to place on him. My brothers and my sisters, that is what we need to realize today. And especially in the midst of all of the havoc that's going on, all of the hurt, that's going on in our world today. We need to realize that God can, can strengthen us to rise against, arise above those things that people has limited you to. Say you can't do this, you can't survive in this world because of this, because of that. So you, you are restricted from this. You are restricted from becoming wealthy. You are restricted from, from, be, from having your own business and succeeding. And there is no limitations with God. So, my brothers and my sisters, <clears throat> if we're going to learn anything from David's experience with his encounter with Goliath, we must remember that limitations don't limit us unless we let them. You got that? Secondly, hear this one. Don't try to be someone else when others impose limitations on you. Don't try to be somebody else. Can nobody beat you being you? So be the best you that you can be. You see, in this story, in, in this text even, Saul tried to put his armor on David. Remember that? Yeah, he went to David to attack the problem as he would attack the problem. But guess what? Saul's armor didn't fit. And David realized that God didn't want a substitute Saul. You see, if God has this particular task for you, he don't want someone else to do the task. He has called you to do it. And he, if he called you five years ago, 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, he still want you to take on that task. And regardless of whoever have come along and say that, you know, they would do it, God still wants you. He don't want a substitute. He wants you. God wanted David. God would never hold you accountable for gifts that you don't have a responsibility he has give, hasn't given you. But if he has called you, he has chosen you, he has told you that he wants you to do something, regardless of how dark and dreary it may seem, regardless of how, 
how you may, or what you may think, guess what? If God has called, chosen, and commissioned for you to do something, he still wants you to do it. And he will never hold you accountable for gifts that you don't have or for responsibilities he didn't give you. He wants you to literally be you. The last thing, if you, if we can learn something from David's uh, encounter with the giant Goliath, and we can learn how to overcome our limitations, the last thing I want you to remember is when you rise above your limitations, you can help others do the same. Or when you rise above your limitations, help others to do the same. Mm -hmm. Listen, David faced Goliath to defeat him. However, David's victory brought victory to the entire nation of Israel. The moment Goliath fell, the army of Israel rose up. At that moment, their fear and intimidation was replaced by courage and aggressiveness. Are you hearing me? In general, listen closely. In general, people follow the example of their leader or leaders. You see, the moment David accomplished more than anyone thought possible, so did his people. So did the children of Israel. My brothers and sisters, I want you, if you hadn't, to begin to see yourselves as God sees you, not as other people do. Listen, begin if you haven't, and if you have, continue to rise above limitations. Overcome limitations people place on you and on your life so that you can help others rise above their limitations. David did it, and God is no respecter of person. David did it, so you and I can do it. We can overcome uh, limitations even when some people that we love don't think that we have potential our family our friends our co-workers our supervisors even our spiritual leaders when they don't think that we have wisdom potential warrior potential winner's potential, or even willpower potential, don't let that stop you from doing what you believe that God has called you to do. And remember that limitations don't limit us unless we let them. We have a choice. God has given us a choice and we can choose to let limitations keep us and hold us fast 
or we can overcome limitations by believing that God has what we need for us to win the battle. Yes, we know the story. David took a slingshot and a stone. Although he had five, he only used one to slay. So David faced the giant Goliath. He fought the giant Goliath, but he also finished him because he slew him. He killed him and took the giant's sword and cut off his head. Although people were saying, David, you can't. But David was saying in his heart, I can, I can, I can. Don't let people tell you what you cannot do. Don't let them limit you to mediocre. Don't let them limit you to average because average is on the top of the bottom and bottom of the top. And you just don't want to be average. Not with the God we serve. We can be much more than average. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this day. We thank you for this word on today. We pray, God, that this word on today will sink deep into our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, and that we'll become better, better Christians, better disciples, better ambassadors of yours. We pray now, God, that we would... Uh, Allow this word to be a part of our lives to remember that we can overcome those things that people has limited us or restricted us or restrained us from doing. Because your word says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we pray now, God, for the church that we would not allow the word, the world to limit it us. Or limit us so we cannot do the things that you have assigned to our hands. That you, We can't make a difference even in a world of turmoil. Give us strength, oh God. Give us the authority. Give us the power to, to move in the authority that you have already given us. That we will not wither along the way. That we'll stand up and be the church that you have called for these last and evil days. We pray that uh, if any are sick among us dealing with maladies and diseases that you will heal them in the name of Jesus because we realize your word says that by Jesus stripes we were healed and we claim that in the name of Jesus on today and we pray God that the church will be alive and well even in the midst of a global a global epidemic or pandemic that we still can be the church. Our voices still can be heard because there is a wilderness crying out for a voice. We pray for those who may not know Jesus Christ as a personal savior. We pray, God, that they would make a decision on today to allow the savior to come into their hearts and make them a new creation, a new creature. And if you're not saved, we'll dare leave this place Leave this uh, broadcast on today without giving you an opportunity to become saved, to, 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 to gain salvation. So if that's you, if you're listening or watching on the day, just pray this prayer with me on tonight so you can be saved. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I need salvation. Forgive me for my sins Come into my heart and make me a new creature, a new creation. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption. I receive him as Lord and Savior of my life. If you pray that prayer on tonight, according to the word of God, you are saved. So I want to, I want you to connect with the Bible believing, Bible teaching church. So you can learn and grow in your confession. And if you need us. For anything, the Innovation Baptist Church, you can call us at 850-575-0818 or you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org and we will help you in whatever area that you need help. We will help you along the way. And if you're backslidden, you know you're saved, but you're backslidden, you walked away from the presence of the Lord. 
I want to give an opportunity to make sure that you know, you understand that you can come back to the father who loves you right now today. So don't put it off until tomorrow. Don't put it off until you think that you can get yourself right. Come back to God on today and he will get you right. So do it now while the, while the blood is still moving warm in your veins, as the old folks would say. So my brothers and my sisters, thank you for sharing your time with us on tonight. We pray that God will continue to bless you. And that if you are struggling with limitations, someone, or someone has limited you and say you can't, they restricted you and say you can't do certain things. Just remember that if you got God on your side, everything is possible. So we'll see you again on Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. If you need a replay for, of this message, you can log on to our website. You can get the replay and you can even share it with someone else. So until Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. for our Sunday morning worship experience, worship in the word, we'll see you then. So stay safe, stay strong, and be blessed certainly is our prayer.